everyone! As you can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about and analyzing the various articles, research, and data concerning race and media. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about Latinos in the mainstream media. And before we continue on with the video, I just want to preface that I will be looking down at my laptop because there's a lot of data and articles and various points of research I want to explicitly point to. And so I want to do my due diligence to make sure I get them all right. So if you see me glancing down, just know that's what I'm doing. I'm making sure I'm telling you guys the right things because I'm personally very invested in this topic and making sure I relay all the information correctly and well to all of you. The topic that we're going to be talking about is one that does hit closer to home for me. And whenever I think about this topic, um, I always think about this one question. So I want us to start off the video by, you know, all together pondering the question. When you look at your television screen, who do you see? And if you're Latino, the likelihood of seeing someone who looks like you is exceptionally slim. From television to film, Latinos have been pushed into the outskirts. And according to studies done by Rocio Rivendanera, Al Monique Ward, and Maya Gordon, in Distorted Reflections, Media Exposure, and Latino Adolescents' Conception of Self, not only is representation found in a small amount, but within the Latino youth, it is associated with lower social and apparent self-esteem. When watching shows, commercials, or media in general, I did not see a strong representation of Latino in the media, and I wanted to dive deeper into this issue. From my own experience as a Mexican-American growing up, I know from firsthand experience what it feels to actively search the screen for someone who, you know, resembles me, even in the slightest extent, and not seeing anyone. I think that in order for change to occur, there must be a starting dialogue. So that's why for today's video, I want to discuss the drastic lack of representation of Latinos in the mainstream media and the problem that this creates. In order to lay out the foundation for this, we have to start by looking at the statistics. So one of the first statistics I'm going to point out, and in my opinion, probably one of the most important that I think really holds a lot of weight when looking at the other um, numbers and data is that Latinos compose of one of the fastest growing ethnic groups in the United States with a population comprising of 18%. Latino representation within the mainstream media has remained consistently low and thus far does not seem to be improving. As discussed in the report, The Latino Media Gap, one way to observe this phenomena is by using the percentage of Latinos in the professional media guild as a point of reference. So we're going to be taking a look at the Directors Guild of America, the Writers Guild of America, <laughs> as well as the Screen Actors Guild. So in the report, it is illustrated that Latino membership ranges from 2% in the Directors Guild, 3% in the Writers Guild, and 6.4% in the Screen Actors Guild. Latinos in film, erasure on screen and behind the camera across 1,200 popular movies was a report conducted to help provide further insight into the representation of Latinos in film. And so within the report, it was found that across 100 top grossing movies from the years 2007 to 2018, only 3% of the films featured leads or co-leads with Latino actors. 47% of the 1,200 movies in the sample completely erased Latino speaking characters. 4.5% of all speaking characters found within these movies were Latino. These statistics lend themselves into being 13.8 percentage points below the US consensus. So I personally find it a little frustrating because despite all of this talk of diversity and inclusion in Hollywood and in the news press, these findings represent no change in the depiction of the largest ethnic group in the United States, who also comprise of 39% of the state of California, 
and 49% of Los Angeles population. And so I think we all know Los Angeles is the place where films are made, directing, casting, acting, and for half the population to be Hispanics, but yet about 6% or less are represented and included in this industry is completely mind boggling. 77% of 50 US states and two territories have populations with a higher percentage of Latinos than what we currently see in Hollywood. And these are alarming statistics that lend themselves to continually disparate the Latino community and especially their youth. Within the master's thesis by Gabriela Arellano, Latino representation on primetime television in English and Spanish media, a framing analysis. She explores the underrepresentation of Latinos within the mass media. And in her thesis, she noted, Latinos are simply not well represented in the media. Although Latinos are the largest minority demographic in the United States, comprising of 18% of the U.S. population, they are underrepresented in mass media, such as television. And when they are represented on television, most of the time they tend to be in stereotypical roles, ranging from maids to gang members, and then over-sexualized idealizations of foreigners. Latinos are simply trapped from having little representation to when there is representation, it is a disparaging stereotype or trope. If Latinos regularly see stereotypical characters about themselves in the media, it does not provide our youth positive examples of their own ethnicity. Due to the fact that Latinos are underrepresented and often negatively depicted within the media, there is a growing concern about how this is affecting our youth. And through studies conducted by the Department of Psychology at Illinois State University and headed by Rocio Rivendanera, who I mentioned earlier, they found that patterns were consistent and that greater exposure and deeper involvement with television were associated with lower self-esteem. Carlos Cortez, a historian who wrote the book, The Children Are Watching, How the Media Teach About Diversity, stated, minorities realize supported by research, that the media influence not only how others perceive them, but how they perceive themselves. What is presented in the media, whether representation or lack thereof, has a profound effect. And now, you must be wondering, how do we change this? First, we have to start with casting, attacking the invisibility across films by reinforcing casting practices. Next, we begin to build the pipeline behind the camera, encouraging the Latino community to pursue careers in filmmaking, directing, producing. Presence will result in authentic storytelling featuring the Latino community and culture. And finally, we have to increase investment in the current ecosystem to support Latino content creators, not only financially, but opportunity based. And while the data might be grim, by placing the necessary spotlight on the topic and taking action, we can all be a part of solving an issue that has plagued the Latino community. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate you all staying and listening. And I encourage everyone here to explore the citations I included below in the description to learn more in detail about exactly where I found the research and the data. And, you know, um, I think taking a deeper dive into these articles and, you know, um, various PDFs I included will, you know, help only inform you more about this issue. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you here soon.